Let's see. Good evening, everyone. How are we? Doing good? Good, good. All right. Well, my name is uh, Robert Forsyth. I will be handing wallet-sized photos of this later if anybody wants, but uh, I am the Chief Innovation Officer at WorldNow, and I'll explain who WorldNow is for, uh, for those that don't know. Uh, before that, I was a uh, uh, long and, and illustrious career in broadcast television, basically on both the engineering and operations side and on the digital side, internet, mobile, new properties, and stuff like that. Now, World Now, show of hands real quick. They're not going to see this on the video. Besides our founder and, and chief, uh, chief or excuse me, chairman of the board, Gary Ganaway over there, who knows who World Now is? Perfect. World Now, uh, which has been around for 15 years, Gary founded the company. Gary was with um, Genesis Entertainment before, major syndicator, and, and uh, sold that company and realized that there was an excellent opportunity for local television stations to really gain a foothold on the internet and in the digital space. 15 years ago, World Now has been doing video since just about day one. So a couple of quick stats about World Now, because I should have put that slide here. Um, World Now does... With our aggregate, we cover about 90% of the country. World Now provides internet services and digital services for local broadcast televisions. Now, mainly today, we've been talking about the tier one people. You know, there have been some big players, and I've, I've actually learned a lot today. So we're going to kind of step it down for a little bit, and we're going to talk about the local broadcast space, and you'll see that their challenges and issues are the same that, that most of your clients and customers are seeing. So World Now provides those services for 90% of the country, a uh, total of, I want to make sure I get these numbers right, Four hundred, more than 450 media sites. Uh, World Now's properties do 117 million unique visitors every month, and we generate over 280 million video streams a month. Now, to give you some comparison, CNN does between 110 and 115 million video streams a month. Aggregate World Now does about 280 million. Um, let's see, we're approaching 1 billion page views a month. And that, that's a pretty big player. We are Akamai's largest client. We are Google DFP's largest client. So just for some scale, just to lend whatever credibility, you know, I can, I can bring to this. That's what WorldNow does. Thank you. All right. So local broadcasters, they're facing the same issues that, that uh, most everybody else is. We have all this content, but from a local broadcaster point of view, where you, most of the big players deal with, you know, a show or a series or a season. Uh, World Now clients deal with tens of thousands of videos every month generated. And the World Now clients have, our, our clients have a, a much shorter shelf life. Usually the news cycles about 48 hours. But they still face the same issues. And we're going to talk about, you know, how we help with that. Standard wheel, everybody's seen it. You know, we produce the content, manage, syndicate, monetize, and analyze. And it just kind of feeds onto itself. From our client's point of view, the critical factors for success is if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that the, the legacy workflows that our clients deal with on a daily basis, the things that they do to make content, not just news content, but they also produce a lot of local non-news content. You know, uh, live capture, web-based editing, all the different outputs and different destinations and stuff, and all of these, how they have to translate into the digital experience. We've got to hit all of the same uh, screens, the same applications, the same workflows that the, uh, that the big boys do. So this is where we're at today. These are what our challenges are. Disconnected workflow, okay? It takes a lot of vendors to make television. So there's a very disconnected workflow of how content from the field gets all the way through the acquisition process, all the way into the curation process, and all the way into delivery process in a very linear flow. Uh, the daisy chain of vendors um, and custom integrations are required. Again, no television station ex is exactly the same. You can't take this piece of equipment and this piece of equipment and put them in two different stations and they'll operate the same way. So there's a lot of customization in our, in our clients' workflows. It is, a, as I said, a one-directional workflow. Broadcasting is broadcasting. It's one stream to everybody. And then we have multiple points of failure. All of these integrated vendors and stuff... You know, that's very easy for content of what I call fall off the face of the earth anywhere in that chain. And there's significant ongoing integration management and maintenance. As broadcasting television and, and local news consolidates, there cons there's consolidation on station ownership, there's consolidation on technology, there's consolidation in screens. 
trying to keep track of all of that is a very, very hard moving target to hit. So what does that mean? Spaghetti soup. You go to any television station, whether it's WABC in New York or WKFB in Tyler, Texas, they all have the same exact workflow. So we have to help those clients manage those based on the scale of their local markets and what their local workflow is. So our key friction points. Time to audience across customer experience with content. The number one rule in local news is publish first. Beat the other guys. You want to be accurate, of course, and you want to make sure that your sources are backed up, but you want to be first. So time to publish is very important to our clients. Workflow, editing, processing, production, where we can take steps to shave off times in that. I mean, literally seconds mean a lot to these people. Uh, automation, where we can look to find reliable. And we've talked about, a lot about automation today, and we've also talked about trusting that automation. So, you know, there's a lot of automation out there, but trusting that automation to perform on a day-to-day -day basis properly uh, is challenging. Uh, distribution, putting the right content on the right screen and finding a way to monetize it and making sure that that content does actually make it all the way to where it's supposed to go. And the last one, as I said, is monetization. Broadcast spot dollars are up here. Mobile digital spot dollars are down here. They'll get $50,000 for a spot in Oprah on television. They'll get $3 a spot for the replay of Oprah, just to give you some scale. So trying to monetize across all those different screens is, is a hard thing. Just a quick slide so people can understand. Television dollars are shifting to digital. So where we had traditional spot buy, it's, it's actually transitioning to and more and more digital plays. In most of our World Now websites, mobile has overtaken web. So finding that content to make it all the way to mobile is a key factor. Online, had, uh, online advertising has replaced broadcast medium or broadcast television from a dollar point of view. And it's going to be $40 billion very soon. I always love this Gretzky quote. You can read it 50 different ways. It's really hard to find what he actually said unless you actually meet Mr. Gretzky, which I don't think will happen anytime soon for me. So as the television market transitions from its linear workflow to this digital, I want it when I want it, appointment television is dead. Now, that's, that only doesn't only go for news. It also goes for long-form content, shows and things like that. It's just not a local news problem that our clients face. They must transition the studio personnel and multi-screen publishers to effectively monetize both linear and digital screens, which means we have to come up with a way to help our clients assign very minimal resources to tackle gaining more money on the digital side. They don't have the resources to put in 50 web producers to make sure that the right spot gets into the right thing or write a story 50 different ways. We have to help our clients bridge from linear to digital in a very cost-effective manner. So how do we capitalize on the new multi-era screen? If you look on the, on the left-hand side, you'll see traditional broadcast companies in there. And what WorldNow has done in the past 18 months, 24 months, we've taken a really strong initiative with a platform we call Studio Gateway, which we'll be talking about big at NAB, where we integrate with all these vendors and stuff on the left to help make the content creation and management process much more efficient in the newsroom so that they're not duplicating, triplicating work just to get to these screens on the right. So we've come up with some very elegant workflows to help them capitalize on getting to the right-hand side of the screen with minimal man-hour resources. This is kind of a slide of where WorldNow kind of fits into this, just so you can understand WorldNow is a core CMS provider. Um, we have a, uh, a very large and, and you know, well-written CMS that let them manage content to these screens. We have over 500 video installations. World Now has its own video hardware stack. Um, it's called VideoScribe. It's actually got a couple patents on it. Um, but we manage the video for not only our own clients, but we manage video for uh, non-traditional television broadcasters. It's a very elegant platform. And then the Studio Gateway, which I'll do my 30-second elevator pitch on Studio Gateway. Studio Gateway is a logistics engine uh, that sits on top of our clients' content. Think of it as FedEx. You've got three steps in FedEx. Source content, logistics, delivery. It's the same thing for everything we're talking about in this room. Content, management and logistics, proper delivery. So Studio Gateway is, a, is an intelligence engine that sits in the cloud that manages all this content and identifies content and moves it around to where it's supposed to be. 
So it not only can do a single thread from point to point, moving this asset from here to here, it can analyze that asset and say, you know what, based on the rules of the client, it says this asset needs to be copied and transcoded and sent over here in parallel as it's being sent to here. So we can actually publish from the web to broadcast to radio to any other electronic destination all in parallel. So that's what the Studio Gateway platform is at the bottom of that. Once we kind of move all of these assets around and get them to where they need to go on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, you know, that's when the monetization play comes in. So as we're moving the content around, we're also forwarding metadata to these destinations that allow for better ad calls to be made. So our system understands that this is a fire video and it can put in, you know, it can instruct Google or DFP to put in, you know, a, a particular advertisement that an advertiser that would want to be associated with a fire is a very broad example uh, to be in. So we're actually forwarding metadata and in some cases creating new metadata as we're pushing it down the chain. Now, as we have this knowledge of all of this content in the cloud, we are saying, what else can we do with this client? How, or what else can we do with this content? What other avenues can we give our broadcasters to use this content, in a lot of cases, reuse this content in new ways? So we came up with a platform called Channel in the Box. Now, Channel in the Box, and you'll see this at NAB, is a virtual television station in the cloud. It handles all the aspects of what television station does. It does master control. It does video playback, it does automation, it does graphics keying, it does everything that you would do in a traditional television station, but it's 100% virtualized in the cloud. Runs on Amazon, runs pretty good. But what our clients are finding that they can create alternative content streams that can be sent to OTT, can be sent live on the web, can be sent to any type of destination without significant overhead costs because we've built this automation and intelligence layer at the cloud level that's managing these destinations for them in real time. So we can recreate a television-like experience in real time. And that's really the key of what we think is the value for what we're offering our clients, is the ability to add an automation and intelligence layer to their existing workflows to create new workflows to create new content streams. And if they create new time content streams, creates new eyeballs, creates new monetization, uh, monetization options. But it doesn't necessarily impact their bottom line because we're not asking them to apply people to it. But the automation is good enough the way they could trust it. So that's kind of a big play for us is helping our clients reuse content and help channelize new content. Uh, we have a couple of clients that actually create content specifically for these channels that they do not have space for in their broadcast linear day. So it's kind of opened up a lot of opportunities for them to low cost basically create another television station and in you know virtual cloud cyberspace whatever you want to call it so that is how we're helping people you know get through that challenge you'll have to excuse my uh, my nervousness and my fast talk it's just what happens when i've had too much diet coke so so if we can get a mic doug you can go ahead and ask a question <laughs> no i'm just kidding are there any questions so thank you very much for your time and if we're uh we're around all night it's okay if you don't i'm good with that Ha! I stomped him. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we're really dealing with, with um, as Mr. Ganaway likes to say, you know, uh, the difference between Model Ts and Rolls Royces. Now, local broadcasters may seem like to you, you know, to the most general public, especially those enlightened ones in the, in the uh, digital space, that local broadcasters are making Model Ts still. And in a sense, they are, but those Model Ts are still very important to our clients. I mean, television is still a $20 billion a year industry and it's not going away anytime soon. It's a huge business. Local TV, thank you, Gary. Local television. So yes, you know, the, the, the Sony pictures and uh, you know, the, the big tier one players that, that you guys work with a lot are dealing with you know, really high end stuff. You know, dealing with the Rolls Royces of the world. But there are still a large base of businesses that may look like they're making Model Ts, but they're slowly coming up to make Rolls Royces. And rights management and DRM and things that Jason was talking about, those are very important, are becoming, excuse me, not very, are becoming important to our clients because they're starting to create a, original content outside of news and they want to protect that content and they certainly want to monetize it. So. So I do have a question. Yes, sir. Maybe just to really understand how this, and maybe I should just wait till NAB, but you were giving the example of studio, your 
broadcast in the bo- in in a box or whatever that uh, next slide. So first of all, how customizable is that? And then if it's if I'm watching KTLA or I'm watching a, a news program, what does it what does it mean if I if I'm watching it on my TV and then I'm watching it on um, I'm, I'm watching it on an IP feed through through my laptop. Sure. I mean, how different is that experience? They're still going to be talking in the same chairs, and what what else is different about it? Well, it's localized. Okay, so let's start off with it's localized for the DMAs and stuff. So it's it's really down to that level. But if you are, I'll give you a real world example. Milwaukee, WTMJ, the journal station in Milwaukee, um, needed to create a twenty four seven television channel that's just news and weather nonstop. Okay, and their marketing is you're only 10 minutes away from news and weather. You can watch what they call 4 Plus online, on your phone, and also on the digital subchannel. So no matter where you're at in the day, you don't need to wait for appointment television. You can go tune into this channel wherever you are, any type of device, and get the latest news and weather. That's how one station is using it. Another station is creating a, a 24-7 news stream that they're calling Web Extra, where all they're doing is populating it with what the new rage in television journalism is, is, hi, I'm reporter, what's his name, doing selfies out here on the sidewalk. I'm starting to see a big trend towards that. So there is a, uh, a station that's using Channel in the Box just to have those channels on. So there's no time limits or anything with this. There's no schedules. It's a broadcast device. It spits out you know, a 1080p signal and all the way down. But there are no schedules and wheels. And the intelligence layer that we apply to it, which is where the magic is, keeps the channel looking fresh. And it can actually react to external conditions like severe weather. It can go into different modes. It's, it really is designed to run autonomously. But it gives our clients an additional avenue to make television without the investment in television, but targeted specifically to those new devices. So that's, that's kind of where this is going. It's going to be a big thing for us at NAB. And it has a lot of power behind it. You know, and the Studio Gateway part of it that's feeding Channel in the Box can also feed OTT. So I'll give you an example of that is OTT basically works the same way. It's all XML category feeds behind the scenes. So you've got your device, Chromecast, whatever. You've got your application, reading XML data, metadata, and pulling it in. Studio Gateway is going to apply your workflow and your methodology for how you want to run your OTT platform and generate those category files in real time. So that when you come to, one of the big mistakes I think a lot of people deal with in VOD jukeboxes, because we can certainly send Channel in the Box live through an HLS stream or anything to any of these devices. But if you go to a VOD channel, in the jukebox, as I like to call them, it's the same video. Video one, video, actually it's backwards. Video five, video four, video three, video two. Studio Gateway is going to be able to um, change and alter that presentation in near real time. So that when you come back to these channels and check what's the latest from WABC News in New York, you have this visual perception that that's exactly the way it looked an hour ago. So Studio Gateway, we're hoping to help bring more content in through an automated fashion, but also change the UI experience subtly so that you don't immediately think that this hasn't changed in an hour. It's as simple, be as simple as just shuffling the videos that are in there. Because television has such a short shelf life, television, local news anyways, that we can help make that a better UI experience and give the perception that it's more real time. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And I learned a lot of great things from you guys today, so thank you.